Good morning. Welcome back to another episode of Coasty Explores and we are here at Yamate in Kowloon. And in today's episode, we're going to be going above ground and finding out and uncovering all the little gems, historical secrets of what this area of Hong Kong has to offer. Now, Yamate is the Chinese word for this area of Hong Kong, but it never used to be called Yamate. Back in the day when the MTR first opened, this station was called Waterloo. Now I've heard a rumor it was changed to Yamate because there were lots of French people living here who didn't like to get off at Waterloo Station. Is that true? Write it in the comments below. But that was changed in 1985 to Yamate. Yamate means oil sesame field. Um, Let's go upstairs now and see how many oil sesame fields are in this part of Hong Kong. Let's go. And here we are, Yamate. Any oil fields in sight? Not many. In fact, we're in one of the busiest areas here of Hong Kong. This is Waterloo Road here, and this is where it meets the main thoroughfare of Nathan Road, which goes all the way from TST all the way up to Prince Edward. Uh, this area of Hong Kong is known as Kowloon, which translates to Nine Dragons, uh, and it represents the Eight Hills and a Song Dynasty um, emperor. And many of the hills actually here were actually dug into and used for land reclamation so around here is generally quite, quite flat. There is one hill just here, which has got a reservoir on top, which we'll talk more about in a bit. We're gonna head along Waterloo Road now uh, because there's a few little gems just along. So let's go. Now I have heard Guzzle is an awesome sandwich place with some good sandwiches. So hopefully we can get back here, but it's not open. We're just a little bit too early. a really nice part of Hong Kong if you love history because we've got a triple header here as I cross the road. We have got an old pumping station just here. We have got the Yamate Theatre here and then we've got the fruit market. Let's check them off one by one. Let's head to the fruit market first. So the fruit market here has been here since 1913 used to be the Yamate wholesale market and at one point you know it was very very close to the shoreline and about 75 percent of Hong Kong's fruit used to come through this wholesale market still a big market today but nowhere near as big as it used to be now this is famous for all you movie fans out there because it's in the title scenes of Enter the Dragon Bruce Lee from 1973 uh, we've got John Saxon and Jim Kelly at the very start of the movie moving around this area of Hong Kong. So if you want to check out what Hong Kong was like back in the 1970s, start with Enter the Dragon and some of Jackie Chan's early films in the 1980s are really good to find out all about what Hong Kong was like back in the day. So let's take a little look and stroll down the streets here within the wholesale market. Let's go. but durian found all over Asia. Um, they grow it a lot in Thailand. Now, you've got to be careful with durian. Uh, my wife loves it, but it does smell. And it's actually illegal to take it into some hotels and even on some planes and trains and public transport here around Asia. So just be careful, but try durian next time you get a chance. And as we head back out the market, right across the street, as I said before, 
the old Yamaha Tape Theatre. Let's take a quick look. It's been refurbished at the moment. So a lot of the frontage is under scaffolding, but let's have a little walk around and find out a little bit more about the Yamaha Tape Theatre. It's going to be easier if I uh, move into the central reservation here. So you can see this wonderful old 1930s uh, cinema and theatre. Now, first used 1930, but it was silent movies to begin with. And then in 1931, they started playing Chinese language films. In World War II, it was censored by the Japanese. The Japanese were here in Hong Kong, so only films censored by them were allowed to be played. Over time, with about a thousand seats, just shy of a thousand seats, this theatre entertained people from Yamate, had a little bit of a seedy past in the 80s and 90s, and then has been regenerated into a Cantonese opera. And it's been refitted out again. So in a year or so when this reopens, we'll have to come back and take a look inside, but we can't for now. So there we go, fabulous old 1930s theatre building here in Yamate. So this area of Hong Kong was ceded to Britain from China in 1860, following the Convention of Peking. And basically we're just over the harbour from Hong Kong Island. And it's just a peninsula, the Kowloon Peninsula, but this played a very important part. Yamate was a fishing village with a few hundred tanker people living on their boats just offshore. There was a very, very small settlement here. But after 1860, when the British acquired this part of Hong Kong, it really started to grow. Therefore, with more people living here and moving to this part of Hong Kong, it needed water. So this building right behind me, that's on Shanghai Street, this what is what remains of the old pumping station here. There, used, there were wells under the ground here with fresh water, and it was this pumping station that pumped up the water from two wells uh, to give clean drinking water to the people of Yamate. You can see the close proximity from the pumping station to the theatre there, and then down there we have just the, uh, the fruit market right there, so they're all very close to each other. Now this, as I said, was built in 1895, and very close, just on a hill behind us here, we have the Yamate Reservoir, which holds the, the water that people in Yamate can drink today. This actually closed down uh, in the early 1900s and it's turned into the post office here in Yamate for many, many years. And all around the streets, all around here, in the early 1900s, pre-World War II, you would have seen lots of uh, tables and chairs and people would come out of the post office and go to a table and somebody would write letters for you because most, most people in Hong Kong were illiterate back in the early 1900s. So in order to send letters, postcards, whatever it is, back to their family in the mainland, they would come here outside the old post office and pay somebody to write a letter and then they'd post it off to their loved ones. Got some wonderful old photos to show you of that in the process. So the old letter writers of Yamate, not many people know about that. Right, let's head back and see if that sandwich place is open, because I'm starving. <music> Shanghai Street, also known as Kitchenware Street. A lot, of, a lot of places in Hong Kong have certain trades where you can buy their goods all in one place, and Shanghai Street's one of these. So if you want to buy anything for your kitchen, knives, forks, pots and pans, this is the place to do it. Get yourself down to Shanghai Street. In this part of Hong Kong, you need to look out for the old tenement buildings here, which are called Tong Lao in Cantonese. And there are a couple right behind me here on Shanghai Street. Tenement buildings, these Tong Laos, about three, four stories high, shop at the bottom and then live in accommodation on top. They're dying out now, unfortunately, as you're finding less and less around Hong Kong. But many are also being uh, regenerated. Uh, so next time you're out and about around, along the roads of Hong Kong, look up and notice these Tong Laos. They've also got like a walkway underneath, so to keep you from the sun and the rain in the hotter months. Ingenious, really. I wish we had them uh, still around in Hong Kong today.
don't forget as well, walking around Hong Kong, we don't use metal scaffolding here, we use bamboo, just as strong, if not stronger. In some buildings you can see it, 50, 100 storeys high, it's old bamboo, so check it out. Next time you're walking around Hong Kong, Here's an interesting fact, Shanghai Street used to be called Station Street. Um, but then there were two Station Streets and Hong Kong didn't want that, just like there were two Robinson Roads. So they changed this one to become Shanghai Street and they changed the other Shanghai Street to become uh, Nathan Road, which is that main road up the centre of Kowloon. It used to be called Station Road because Used to, the, the old police station used to be here on the prayer, prayer, Portuguese word for uh, waterfront. So many words we use here in Hong Kong do have a port Portuguese origin because Portuguese Macau was not too far away on a boat. So a bit of Portuguese influence in this city as well. There we go, who'd have thunk it? They've got lots of different types of sandwiches here. Spam and scrambled egg, corned beef scrambled egg, or we've got tomato scrambled egg, house salad and avocado, and hash brown bacon, lettuce, mushroom, almost like a full English breakfast in a sandwich. But I think I'm gonna go for the spam, coriander, and scrambled egg. It seems to be the, uh, the one that most people go for here. So let's check that one out. Now spam, I haven't had Spam for years. It was from the 1930s in America, and it was big during World War II. And then it's been big in China and Hong Kong ever since. And over here, not a delicacy, but it's certainly thought of more highly than back in America and the UK. So let's check out the Spam sandwich. Thank you, cheers. You too. Okay. Guzzle sandwich, let's guzzle this down. But we're gonna head to a park that I really like. It's just behind a famous temple here. So let's head down Portland Street, named after the, the Duke of Portland. And then we'll eventually get to a nice little park there. There's probably going to be some local Chinese old guys and girls playing some games with a bit of luck. Let's find out. tend to see this all around here in Hong Kong. Elderly people, quite often elderly women as well, uh, recycling cardboard. Day and night they're out and about uh, to get what extra pennies they, they can. It's quite a poor area, Yamate, and uh, we'll talk about it a little bit as we head further down uh, towards the temple. Now, uh, Portland Street turns into Arthur Street. Never actually heard of this maybe named after the Duke of Connaught, Prince Arthur, seventh child of Queen Victoria, but I'm not sure. So if you know, let me know. Uh, we've just got a uh, little Thai food shop here. Thai food and barbecue, not open today, but I'll have to tell my wife about this and maybe we'll come back, get some Thai food one day. All right, let's keep heading down. Okay, we've made it to the Tin Hao Temple here in Temple Street. Really old building this, 1864 this was built, and this would have been built on the waterfront here in Yamate. Now, around a kilometre until you get out to the Yamate Typhoon Shelter that way. Um, we've done a bit on uh, Tinao Temples before, so I won't say too much. We'll have a quick look in, and then we'll head round the back for a bite to eat, and also a special relief. Interesting.
we go. That's the Tin Hao Temple. And if you want to see what it looked like back in 1955, then check out Soldier of Fortune with Clark Gable and Suzanne Haywood. Uh, part of that was filmed here. As well as, again, if you want to see what Hong Kong was like back in 1955, just check out all those old movies. Got some wonderful trees here. The ubiquitous. Is that what they are, Jason? Ubiquitous? Ubiquitous. Banyan tree ubiquitous banyan trees that we find here in Hong Kong and also a candle nut tree. Don't see a lot of these around but there's lots in this park here. If you want to find out what they do for you, Google it. There's tons and tons of different good things that the candle nut tree can do for you. Right, let's head round the back for some relief. Here we are, the Nine Dragon Relief on the back of the Tin Hao Temple here in Yamate. Uh, there's only a few actually outside uh, China itself. Here in the special administrative region there are two. There's one at Wang Tai Sin Temple as well. Uh, there's one in the Forbidden City. There's another one in Beijing, I believe, and a few scattered around the world, but not many. But if you know the significance of this Nine Dragon Relief, do let me know and put it in the comments below. Right, time to eat that sandwich. Okay, remember this is not a food channel. I'm not a foodie, I do love my food. But it's not a food channel. Right, let's take a look at this Spam coriander and scrambled egg sandwich. Here we go. Mm. Well, not bad at all. Good ratio of meat to scrambled egg to coriander. I'm not sure I would choose this one again. I think that full English one looked better, but um, not bad. That's going to keep me going for the next hour as we uh, go and find some more historical gems around Yamate. Right, lead me to it. Wouldn't be a coast to explore unless we pointed out a nice public toilet and this one is a very old one um, been on this site for oh many many years used to be a bathhouse as well but now just a public toilet we're in Market Street and then we've got the Tin Hao Temple here now at night time all along this road there are tarot card readers uh, and if you don't speak Chinese it's okay because most of them can read your palms in uh, English as well so when we come back to Yamate after night, after dark, should I say, we'll, uh, we'll come back here and maybe get our palms read and see what the future holds for Coasty Explorers. I always love this building here. This uh, frontage with all the multicolours is marvellous. Uh, inside this building actually is somewhere I come to do a bit of charity work. As I was saying before, a lot of uh, poverty still here in Hong Kong. This is one of the poorest areas. So every day of the week, there is a soup kitchen in this building. Uh, sometimes on a Sunday with some of my favorite students, we come here and we uh, cook, uh, pack, and give out the food to the poor people here in Yamate who haven't got the facilities to cook for themselves. So yeah, let's keep on walking. Just heading across Nathan Road now. A lot of Thai, Filipino, and other Asian languages being spoken around here. Many of who are tourists. Good to see Hong Kong. Uh, not quite back to normal, but many, many tourists still coming to Hong Kong and enjoying what the city has to offer. Right, we're going to head across here. I'm not sure if you can see in the distance, but a very Greek looking building there. Interesting one. Let's check it out. And here it is, the old Kowloon Magistrates, or the old South Kowloon District Court, as it was back in the day. Uh, built in 1937. Um, at one time, during World War II, it was the headquarters here of the Japanese police, the, the Kempatai. And we're right on Gascoigne Road. Gascoigne Road, named after the footballer Paul Gascoigne, who in 1996 famously had the dentist chair incident here in Hong Kong, only joking. Named after Sir William Gascoigne, he was the last Lord Lieutenant 
of the, the colony back in 1902. Uh, interestingly, in 1967, there were many, many riots here in Hong Kong. Uh, so let's take a little peek at what happened during those riots back in 1967 and a really interesting photo from outside this court building. The 1967 riots in Hong Kong were a series of violent protests and demonstrations fueled by a mix of social, political and economic factors. Many Chinese residents in Hong Kong were dissatisfied with their living conditions, economic inequality and perceived mistreatment by the British government. The riots began with labour strikes organised by groups sympathetic to the Chinese Communist Party. These groups called for better working conditions, higher wages and the release of leaders imprisoned by the colonial authorities. However, the protests quickly escalated into widespread violence and chaos. China believed that the riots were a response to deep-rooted grievances and frustrations among the local population. Some Chinese residents felt marginalised and viewed the British colonial government as oppressive and discriminatory. They believed that the riots were a legitimate form of resistance against colonial rule that highlighted the socio-economic disparities and were a fight for social justice. Here you can see a group of protesters at the Kowloon Magistrates Courts and here being dispersed with the use of tear gas. Back in the editing suite, I've managed to find some archive footage of that day in 1967. The British government reflected on the riots as a wake-up call, recognising the need for political and social reforms to address the underlying issues and grievances that fuelled the unrest in Hong Kong. The riots led to a reassessment of British governance in the territory and ultimately contributed to the introduction of limited democratic reforms in the following years. China very much views the riots as a significant event in Hong Kong's history, marking a turning point in the city's path towards self-determination and the eventual reunification with China in 1997. Join me next time on Coasty Explores when we venture deeper into Yamate, uncovering the jewels of the Jade Hawker Market. Take a look at the Instagrammable old police station, learn about the Nepalese community here, find an old British era post box, visit an old pawn shop, and one of Kowloon's oldest churches before attempting to solve the mystery of the missing George V statue on the site of a Ming Dynasty fort before finally hitting the west coast for a look at the Typhoon Shelter. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Coasty Explores.